Welcome to Sad Boys, a podcast about feelings and other things also. I'm Jarvis. And I'm Jordan. Let's talk about that. Why? What? You, we were just introing the show. What we were going to talk to you about being our guest. What could that mean? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, then let's, let's talk, talk, about, talk about that. Don't do it again. What are we? Did talking. I just do it twice? Yeah. 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 Sometimes I have to have people tell me that I've done it. Yeah. You've got such a big operation that you can kind of have a person for everything. It just, it costs yeah, you got to like, you've said it twice, guy. Who's it, just sits there going, it costs us so much money every time you say it. Yeah. Because we have to use the, the intro. bill is racking up. Jacob, our producer, a million dollars a minute. Yeah. Yeah, let's talk about that. <laughs> no, dude, yeah, please. We are in the oh red. The shirt um, from his back. <laughs> I mean, there are so many things that I say that it, it's just it's uh, it's like muscle memory. Yeah. Oh, I'm yeah. sorry. I'm sorry for doing that. This is just going to be the real me. This is the real you. The real sad me. We should That's talk about that. Yeah. yeah. So let's talk about, we that. Talk we about that. that. We should talk about that. Oh, slightly no. Slightly different. The intro's playing. <laughs> we should talk about that. Um, so we are joined today by Link Neal, the inimitable. I like to use that word for some reason. Yeah. I've been, I think maybe three episodes. Is anybody, you're, you're not saying it right, but I do it, like it. it wait, has anybody imitated you? Inimitable. <laughs> Lately? Yeah, wait, it, wait, how do you say it? Intermittently. No. Yeah. That's a different word. <laughs> yeah, Ethan. Let's talk about that. <laughs> okay, we can. <laughs> Ethan. So um, uh, we're, we're joined by Link today. A, uh, are you, are you Do you know my being, last name? Neil. Oh, wow. Red. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> are you comfortable being called a, a godfather of YouTube? Uh, a founding I've father never, of YouTube, the Mount Rushmore. Not founding. N- n- you are the founder of YouTube. Yeah. You coded it in your basement. <laughs> You're the one in that Me at the Zoo video, right? Yeah. I don't, I take it as a compliment. If you want yeah, to call me just, godfather really of YouTube. Like making you uncomfortable on purpose. Mm-hmm. Like this, uh, that's the show. You the know? legend, the king, emperor of YouTube. I like Bring that. someone into my living room and just make them as uncomfortable as possible and then kick them on their merry way. Yeah, there's there's not many places to sit. I'm pretty uncomfortable. Oh, this place is a wreck. Yeah. yeah no, it's like, yeah, it's the it smell, Thank I you, think. Actually. You're clearly on your way out. I'm out. I'm or in. It's who like, knows? That's, in, that's the liminal space I like to reside in. I mean, you're implying that it's, where he lives, which is not, and not that we just oh. broke into a peer space, um, just like some abandoned building. <laughs> yeah, or like we have to record where. pretty fast before the owner gets back. Actually, um, so what is this a we work exactly? Oh, and we we are working. Let's right talk now. about that. And let's yeah, <laughs> this is not going to oh, end. No. <laughs> once you say it, <laughs> it's once you pop, nice. you just can't stop. It's like a pre. Right. <laughs> I kind of like it. Actually. Um, Maybe that's mine now. So, link. I feel like the internet knows you as one half of of Good Mythical Morning, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. but some people like me remember you as like the guy who was putting on a bunch of t shirts and like a Red Link video <laughs> circa I don't know, two thousand and seven. <laughs> yeah, maybe one hundred and eleven t shirts. Is that how many it was? Well, there were two hundred twenty two. Mm. We thought that was like a good internet number. Yeah, mm-hmm. and I just assume I put on half on a, uh, of them, but I probably put on more than half. You've done a lot of because I carry a lot of what we do. What was the, yeah? You're kind of the yeah. You're, you're Red the just wore a shirt, from what I remember. He just wore a regular shirt. Didn't really contribute. Yeah, to, he didn't contribute. Uh, Does the internet know how tall you are? If they care, I mean, I think you can find out. But I don't think I think people like to normalize to Red. Yeah, mm-hmm. and then when they see me in person. Just verbally process what's happening. <laughs> right. <laughs> because we go through the same thing. I think I have a theory that because of how everyone go like everyone learns to frame up their cameras exactly the same way. Uh-huh. And yeah. so you are basically normalizing a person to look at average size in a camera frame. You would never want to make right. someone look larger than life. You're not doing like forced perspective like a Lord of the I Rings I like what movie. you're getting at though. Like if, right. if all of a sudden it's like, all right, new for Good Mythical Morning season 24 or whatever. Right. We're at, uh, Red's going to be chopped off at the collarbone. <laughs> yeah, he's yeah. Just, just, he looks like your dad. Just, just like in the frame. He looks like a Charlie Brown adult. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It, it's so, <laughs> Red's going to be... <laughs> <laughs> well, it's a thing Oh yeah, that, like, he, he kind of goes in that anyway. Or maybe that's just... In my mind. Oh, yeah, yeah, you have the youthful energy of uh, Charlie Brown. <laughs> well, it's There's definitely thing- lots of times on the show when, like, one of us will say to the other, I just said that. <laughs> it's like, I just, whatever you just said, as if I didn't say it, you, obviously you didn't hear me. You're not listening to right, me. Right, right, right. 
should we stop? Is this show broken? Sure. Uh-huh. Every That's, single episode, there's every a, single yeah. Mm-hmm. There's a there's a part we have to cut out where we're like <laughs> the bicker. I just said couple. that. Yeah. <laughs> um. Well, the reason I bring that up is because I think you're taller than me. I think you and Jordan are similar heights, right? Like maybe the same. Yeah. Same well, I'm height. Six foot. Huh? How tall? How tall? You're not six foot. You just said I was foot. six foot, right? No, you, I I was, I'm like no, six I one. Thought six that. one. I think you're. Yeah. See. I just I thinking how tall I was. <laughs> we just said that <laughs> <laughs> because we talked about that. Um, so <laughs> no, it's playing again. <laughs> yeah, oh god! Oh god! So Venmo transaction. We, every well, time. we always get this thing where like I'm six one, Jordan's six three, and whenever people see us on camera, they just assume I'm like a little short Mario, and Jordan's the big tall Luigi you know what I mean and that's only two inches difference and that's only two right. inches different but it's just about we the, got a seven inch difference that's in crazy but Red is a freak of a man. <laughs> He's just like un like you're not allowed to be that big. It should be criticism to him. Yeah. Not a compliment. He should get hate I mean? comments about Oh, him. he does hate it. Oh. He hates it. Okay, well now I feel bad. Well, I suppose in his case, it's framing is challenging. And your show also means that there's a master shot, so he doesn't get to be completely isolated in his own little There's a stick. They, there's a, a, it says Rhett stick on it. And it's a six foot seven tall stick that like the crew carries around and like in order to frame things appropriately because for that the longest sense. time they would anticipate. Right. And then he would show up and then they have to change everything. Yeah. Imagine if he shows up to a place that like isn't prepared for him, like a norm, like he's guesting on a podcast, like our podcast. Oh. And then poor Jacob has to like, is he going to, I mean, we're already only talking about him. The height thing. You're actually going to have him on the we're show. Gonna, too? We're going to take all of these comments and then replay him to Red and then <laughs> yeah. see, this see. Is, this is all just a prep we're gonna do for like your a episode one-way. with him. Yeah. 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 We're you just think, warming up. You do you know? think he'll like the, let's talk about that recurring joke. Cause I think it, if that doesn't land, we, we can, cut that out we really care what he thinks right um and of course so do i i'm really glad that we're devoting so much energy to just talking yeah. about him do you have well, his number i want to know <laughs> actually i don't know his number anymore it's one of the he changed it so. i don't know his number he has seven numbers in right. my phone because every time he like leaves the country and comes back he's got, got like a, a new renaissance man. Yeah. <laughs> what can i say it is like the at, like the iphone glitches out when you look at all of the numbers attached to jordan's contact it's very confused yeah. you got to de- and you you and should I, delete well, i'm afraid to delete the one that's his real number right it's like because, russian roulette <laughs> because then you literally could go what Days without talking to it's each just, other just lit- i couldn't tell you which of these is his real number one of them always I tells bet you the he truth could. Yeah, two of them I, tell I bet lies. You he couldn't actually. That's that's a Jesus. Um, this is nice. Oh wow! Okay, this is, they're all you, whatever you like. Yeah, <laughs> you don't know <laughs> either, huh? Yeah, who's to say? Hey, is there any creative desire for you to sort of have individuality in in your content? Because you, I've really. Taking a taking a turn here because no, that's a good question. you've been like in a comedy duo, and this is something yeah. that like I think about with us, you know, because we've just been friends for so long. Mm-hmm. You've been in a comedy duo for so long that it's just kind of like it rolls off the tongue, you know what I mean? And and people just like kind of associate you, of course. Um, do I? I typically don't think like that. Like I enjoy working in the context of the creative partnership and yeah. um, I think, you know, over the pandemic, Rhett started writing music, like serious yeah, music. Yeah. And then he, he released an album under another name, James and the Shame. And it was, right. um, it took me a little bit. Mm-hmm. It took, it took me a minute to kind of, wrap my mind around okay what is this what is it what does this mean right, you know sure. could i read into this right is this you know? is he trying to say i need but but it feels natural right just to it was very natural and he's operating but, in such a segmented space outside of what you do together yeah it was it was totally appropriate i'm glad he did it mm-hmm. and i'm glad he did it for me because it it did bring up some good conversations between right. the two of us where it was like okay he was expressing his desire to do this particular project, mm-hmm. you know, to express himself. It was just something that started happening. Right. And 
but the way that we started talking about it, it was, it started off a little strange because it was like, I think he anticipated that there would be that this is new territory for us. Right. You know, we've had a lot of conversations. We've had conversations about over the course of, you know, 37 years of friendship and especially like deck, you know, almost, you know, we're working on over 16 years of just being a professional partnership. Right. You, you have to talk about everything. Yeah. But when that new thing that you haven't talked about comes up, it's always, it always feels a little, okay, what's mm-hmm. this going to be like? Right. You know? And for him to be able to say, Hey, I, I, not only do I want to do this, I do like the idea of doing some stuff that's my own thing. So like his answer to your question would have been a lot easier than my mm-hmm. answer. Mm-hmm. Cause he'd have been like, yeah, um, there's things that I just want to do. You right. know, like he's more of that, like, I've got this big idea that just popped into my head and I want to go after it. Right. And, and the vast, vast, vast majority of that is then contextualized within the two of us and what we're going to do. Right, right. But sometimes it's like he wants to do some stuff on his own. Mm-hmm. And this was a very, the James and the Shame Project was a very good exploration of that because it was so separately defined yeah and it made so much sense for him to go after that right it's now, not for, like i'm you're gonna play triangle just to like be involved right <laughs> you right know what I not mean? even yeah. and it wasn't even tied in with because it's not just the two of you that are the infrastructure all of mythical is built around it so if, yeah. say he did yeah. the music and every other team member at the company was involved in the project. Yeah, he, so he made some decisions to say, okay, I'm going to keep this entirely separate mm-hmm. to make this more clean. Right. And it is a bona fide side project. It's yeah. not like, um, I don't know. So I think I, f- I felt a little threatened because I always think creatively within the context of our partnership. Sure. That, so I'm just kind of built a little bit different in that way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, it's... I. I and I'm fine with that. Right. And I think as long as I can be fine with Rhett doing his thing occasionally, mm-hmm. you know, if it, yeah. if it took off and that's the thing that he wanted to pursue, that would, that yeah. would, that would be a much more difficult conversation. Very difficult. I'm not going to say it, it, it couldn't happen. Sure. But that's not what either one, that's not what he wants. Right. Not what and I, there's, yeah, I want. It's a whole, so yeah, it's a whole I don't think we'll ever get there. Yeah. 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 Hey. It's me, Jarvis from the future. If you're watching this right now, then immediately after this episode of Sad Boys, you can head over to patreon.com slash sadboys and listen to me, future Jarvis, and also future Jordan. He doesn't get a microphone in the future. (laughs) Um, We're doing another full episode of the show over on patreon.com slash sadboys, available right after you watch this one. Enjoy the rest of the show. Is there something that, as a duo you would want to scale out to trying or doing that you've never dabbled in not even an independent project i mean the example that we know is not the answer would be music right like we're doing yeah, a new you guys album have kind of done it all you've you've made board games you've done tv shows you've you know you've kind of the creative gamut you've kind of run together as a duo you've been so, six one you've been shorter than that yeah yeah you've, yeah, you've hung out with the red stick just to, as an emotional support <laughs> stick i should have brought it where, where did they get that was the mission i need somebody to go out and find a red yeah stick. you like go to it, home depot it, and you're like it very it much <laughs> looks totally custom made by right. probably morgan mm-hmm. who works for us okay, like yeah. he he very much he's he's very self-motivated too so like, he'd be like i have this idea I'm not just going to get any stick. I'm going to make a red stick. Yeah. But if you were asking what <laughs> what I want to do or right. what mm-hmm. what I want to just be mine, yeah, I started getting into DJing, like oh. bedroom DJing. Mm-hmm. Right. I mean, really like living room. I don't technically do it in the bedroom. Right. You know, like, that is a sacred space. Yeah. <laughs> that you would have to That's have some saved. conversations about that. So I do a kind of DJing. Yeah. <laughs> so Red and I would talk about how me getting into DJing as a hobby is like my own thing. Right. It's interesting you know? that it's both music in both cases. Music, other like yeah. siloed projects. It just it was just something that I was doing during the pandemic. Yeah. And I 
I was more—I uh, was going to say reticent, but then that would like invite some sort of pun. Mm, yeah, we're yeah. not going to do that. Yeah. It's okay. We won't do it. Now that we've like front porched it, we won't do it. If okay, we thank use you. Well, after this conversation, we're actually going to ban all mention of Rhett for the rest of yeah. the episode. That would be great. Oh, actually, yeah, yeah, yeah. Because yeah. yeah, we'll um, you know, as the Godfather of YouTube, yeah, the soul. <laughs> yeah, we didn't say Rhett was like, the I need my do. Yeah. Yeah, 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 you're a single Godfather. <laughs> I my DJing has kind of taken a. It's it's still it's still it's still bubbling up. When we did yeah. Mythicon, oh yeah, I unveiled my DJ persona. Oh, that's cool. Elkhound Snuggle Baby. <laughs> Elkhound Snuggle Baby. How did you come up yeah. with that? Elkhound came up because I like dogs. My mom's first dog was a Norwegian Elkhound. Beautiful dog. Mm. I just liked the way it sounded. It sounds cool. No but it almost cool. sounds too cool. So I had to put mm. something with it that, that said, okay, if you thought the elk hound was cool, and that's your decision. Right. But I have a hunch that you might. Right. So therefore, I want to make sure that you know that there's a second parenthetical title to my DJ right. moniker. It's and like it's, a shot in a chaser. Yeah. <laughs> there's a snuggle kind, baby. There's a kind side to me as well. I can multitudes. You know, so it's yeah. like, it's a... Totally unabashedly uncool, <laughs> almost sincere. Like, yeah, there's a cuddly nature to the type of music that I'm gonna play. The vibe that I'm gonna set, I'm gonna go into snuggle baby mode, nice. and we're just gonna we're just gonna chill out. Maybe yeah. it's the pace of the DJing session start high energy. There's a little there's an elk hound mode and there's a snuggle baby <laughs> mode. That's right. I'm gonna go elk hound mode this week. So <laughs> if you are DJing, so you get it. <laughs> you get it. <laughs> I'm, I'm, and I, I'm yeah, I was I'm wearing uh, huge ass antlers nice i am imagining you in red and like flannel. a fur drape okay oh nothing i else. like that yeah it was draped i was draped in a white fur it was it was kind of norwegian is that appropriation do you have any norwayness yeah 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 we're about um, to stolen valor your norway i'm sure it's appropriation right yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, don't, I think norway is cool with that actually Some of my we best friends are word. <laughs> i thought it was a safer appropriation i think it is right oh i, I think, think no on one's the gonna call you on it. it's right? barely even a thing yeah for, for this white guy <laughs> Yeah. yeah, it felt like it was safer. You've got yeah. more hardware to work with than we do. <laughs> we are not the authority on it. I'm sure Red has Hardware. some experience <laughs> being white. I'm not a great DJ, but um, but hey, what was I that really, about somewhere? I really, I'm just really into music. So what kind of genre? That was kind of like with? my. It was my outlet, and it was my expression. Was yeah. it the and the it took Red to say, you know what, you need a DJ name, you need an outfit, you need. To, <laughs> That's like his like, kind of brain working the way right. it does, yeah. Which is nice. It, it was yeah. helping you up like a flavor flavor. <laughs> I think I do that. I love for, for Jordan, you know. Oh yeah, like yeah, yeah. Uh, flavor flavor. Like uh, the your YouTube channel, which you just hit two hundred thousand subscribers. Congrats! Congratulations. On that. Uh, I remember we started the YouTube channel because I I would always pull you in to do collabs with me because I loved you know I loved our comedic sort of energy, our comedic voice together as a duo, and we were doing this collab like right after I moved to LA, and we were like, there's nowhere for us to like tell people to subscribe. And so we started yeah. an empty YouTube channel that was like Jordan's YouTube channel. And yeah, I cracked we, a nice 20K on that without making any videos. Yeah, that yeah, yeah. A, which I highlight. thought was really fun. It um, was more of a celebration a great start. Than two Yeah, just a little. That's He's my Nepo baby a little bit, you know. I just like to, I always think in the context of partnership and collaboration a, a lot more. I just think that's how I'm geared. Like when you talk about, like, what did you say about Flavor Flav? You said that Rep was being my Flavor Flavor Flav, and he was like hyping me up mm -hmm. to like, uh, like fully form my DJ right aspirations. That's true, but like back in the day, when I would listen to Public Enemy, I was like that. I, of course, I was I was in middle school, yeah. So, so it's like that guy Flavor Flav. That's my guy. That's he is hilarious. <laughs> and we did ask you to take your like, clock off when you walked through the door thank today, you. just because it was going to clink with a microphone. But now I don't know what time it is. Chuck <laughs> D was and is like, was such a cool person. Yeah. And Flavor Flavor was just, and is this like totally unhinged. Right. But like, that's who I, that's who I wanted to be. Right. Like I was Flavor Flavor as Halloween one year. Oh, that's awesome. All, all I did was wear sunglasses and a hat. 
Like flavor, flavor. <laughs> it's iconic. <laughs> and I had a clock. We were, yeah, we were. I did have a clock. He didn't even have a clock. He, he was like, I am flavor. But it was it was a, a very small clock. <laughs> oh yeah, it was I a watch. I think <laughs> it was a. You know how you know a gym teachers all like they'll have the stopwatch hanging around their neck oh, yeah. like a whistle. That's oh, that that's funny. what I did. You got the stopwatch hanging around that's my neck, funny. and nobody knew who I was. But like, I just I identified with that guy, yeah. the guy who right. was. You know, he had a couple of songs on the album, but it was re- he was re- he was a hype guy. He was really just there right. mm-hmm. as a as just a little, uh, you know, some seasoning to mix it up. Right, like the. But but again, there's it. I think it means something that like that's who I identified with. Yeah, that's really interesting. Yeah, just to, my connection to him is really through the Flavor of Love show, unfortunately. Mm. Don't tell you what. I've just, never seen that. I, I, you, I'm making a decision. To. To. Never seen it before. Watched all four seasons a few weeks ago. For whatever, some weird series of events or alchemy in our apartment. Me and um, my roommate Ethan watched every single episode. Uh, does maybe he, three seasons. And then does he end up no. um, mm, happy? I, we hope. Oh, he, <laughs> not he for a moment, is on. The only times when he is unhappy is the result of the dates he's going on. Oh, those oh, are yeah. only the time when he has an unpleasant date. Yeah, when he's just not being himself. He's like, they're they're forcing me into this normal box. And I had to meet their parents today. <laughs> yeah, yeah, maybe I should watch this. It's it, great. It might be a religious experience for you. Who knows? You I'm might also really connect with him. Like a, I'm a harmony guy. Like when I listen to music, oh, okay. I sing the like, harmonies. I'll sing the harmony because I, you know, I it was just kind of self taught. Yeah. And, but that's what would always get me like that challenge of how do I, how do I fit into this? How do I make this better? How do I partner with whatever's happening yeah. to be a, a part of it? Well, not to like over extrapolate on it, but that is kind of what, of all solo music projects, that DJing would be the closest to that. Yeah. That is the like, the highlight of the project is the music and you're shepherding that. And yeah, I feel the best that. Opportunity. I feel that. Even I mean, even being you know like an instrumentalist, more more like classical instrumentalist, is maybe a little bit more like craft focused. People are like, oh, look at that, like finger dexterity or something like that, as opposed to just you're doing a more holistic. The music's here. I'm just going to be the path for that. And as much as I like being the center of attention, I don't know. There's always been this. Um, balancing impulse that's like, okay, but if I make this all about me, it's not, this isn't going to work out. Mm. You know, like um, the Junior Beta Club convention. This is a big deal. We would, this was like ninth grade. Okay. And so not just our high school, but we went to like Garner High. It was called High. the Beta Club? Beta Club is, oh, you know what that is? That's like the, that's like the smart people. It's oh. the club mm. Sorry, I was, smart people. I was part of the Alpha Club. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. I was they just, called it the Beta Club, yeah. It was, that's funny. My uh, it, my friend was Sigma Sigma Sigma. <laughs> so, okay, wait. Junior and we would Beta get, Club, ninth grade, so, yeah. And we, so we would go to Garner High. It was a huge high school. Where, and all of these students would Carolina? be in North Carolina. Okay, cool, cool, cool. So all of these students would come there that we didn't know. And it was just once a year. And so we're in this big uh, auditorium. And they're just doing the, you know, talking talking to the smart kids type thing. But then the some, something goes wrong. Mm-hmm. And there was a programming faux pas. Ooh. And, you know, the way I remember it, there might have been, you know, 600, 800 kids in this room. Right. And somebody, an adult, gets on the mic and says, I'm sorry, we're, we have, we're having to sort out some things for a few minutes. Would anybody like to come up and tell a joke? Oh, shit. And so immediately, I'm kind of in the back left with like my betas. Yeah, my betas. <laughs> And <laughs> we were going to take this a different way in 2023. Right. <laughs> yeah, I know. Me and the soy beta cups. <laughs> I think, I don't know. I think I know what a beta is, a beta male. It, yeah. it's, and it's, I, it's just like a very 
uh, a toxic term used generally by men's rights activists to, to like separate emas- the- to separate. So it's like a weak. Yeah, it's meant to emas- um, an emasculated man, but only in only contrast the, to an alpha male. In contrast yeah, to an alpha, which male. I think and it, they exhibit the most toxic male traits, and so the beta is typically. Look at this feminized guy. Where in reality, it's just look at this not normal, <laughs> normal person. I think I think all this will tie in very nicely. Okay, perfect to the to where this story is going. So you're in the back corner. You're yeah, with and your I, betas. I just immediately stood up and started walking down the aisle. Did you? And did then you I'm gesture like, gesture or anything, or you just beeline? Yeah, I was like, this is my moment. Right. Do I know what I'm gonna do? Do I know what I'm gonna say? Do I? Believe I'm qualified. Now, none of these things mm-hmm. are thoughts that I had, or probably would have now. I mean, this I mean, is, le- I mean, I wouldn't. I would probably do the same thing now. But that but, I have to say, yes, I'm going up there, and that's what's gotten you to where you are today, though. Oh, thank you. Because you can't a Godfather of sorts. Yeah, you can't like uh, <laughs> in any situation. You have to be able to put yourself out there, and I think that that is a superpower. That not everyone possesses. And, but then if you don't have any follow through, it could be problematic. True. I get up there on stage. I get the mic. And I was just, I said something about the food here really tastes like sh- sh- chicken. <laughs> and that was my okay. joke. But I was... I think it's what I actually felt. I think I was speaking from the heart. Right. But I was har- trying to harness that for some sort of like backdoor humor. Right. And people, when they thought I was going to say taste like shit, it, I got, they were listening. Yeah. And then I don't know what I said after that. It was just kind of like fugue state. Right. Of course. Next thing I know, I see Rhett coming down the aisle, coming up on the stage to rescue me from myself. Right. And then he had a, he had formulated some thoughts. And then... Wait, how old are you both in this situation? Ninth grade. Ninth so grade. this is like, what, 14? If maybe 15, yeah. 14, 15, yeah. So um, that's kind of the pattern of like, you know, I really enjoy working within the context of our partnership because I don't know how he feels about it. I mean, it, he might feel like it's a bit of a burden mm. at times because it's like I can just kind of free fall into whatever and then know that he's going to provide a little more structure to it. Right. You know, um, that feels related to our relationship. I was going to say, I have a, I wrote it a while back. I always forget to bring it up. I did write a very like soppy paragraph in my little sad boys prep note, which basically just summarizes. It was just a list of like reasons I've been finding the show very easy since I got back. And I think one of the things that latency always gets in the way of is that, dynamic a little bit that like yeah handoff oh yeah hand here and i since the beginning of the show it's always been nice to i think kind of what you're describing i like being color i like being cajun spice on yeah. top of like a good foundation i've just always felt that jarvis is a very good not solo host but a very good at structuring and leading and i always it gives me a lot of fun space to just experiment walk up the aisle without having a joke in mind kind right, of stuff. right 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 yeah, uh, it's, I uh, do appreciate that a lot. And it's good to kind of have different lanes. So it's not just like, okay, I depend on him. You know, it's like I I would be curious like what what his version of this is. Like right. mm-hmm. it's not something that we talk about that yeah, much. Yeah, yeah. Do you imagine yourself in the reverse where Rhett is up on stage and he's doing like the airplane food is chicken or whatever? Would yeah. you do the same as that 15 15 ish year old? Yeah. Would you imagine you would also walk up the aisle and dive in, help? Uh, I would just have to give get my licks in, you know. Yeah. That's the reason why I'd be going up there. Right. I don't think I would have had to have rescued him. Right, mm-hmm. right. Because uh, he's not going to put himself out there unless he knows that he's got a plan. That's me. That, yeah. Um, And that ends the ret corner. But I want to give you some specific. Nice. No, and I want to move into link. the compliment corner. Uh, which is not a segment of the show that we have, but I want to give you some compliments, Link, because uh, custom segment. A just custom for me segment. Do you have any compliments? Yeah. When are you? Get- so, yes, please. Do you have so, any for us before? Okay, not, so, not first. No. Oh, so on. first of all, I'm going to start third. this with a little bit of a. I'm going to start this, and I'm going to take it somewhere else. All right. 
Uh, first of all, where do you get off? You're you're tall, you're attractive, you're successful, you've got a beautiful family. Fuck you. Mm. Um, <laughs> oh, is that is that how these compliment, drinking, <laughs> compliment corner? Um, drinking our water and yet yeah, yeah, yeah. you have it all already. <laughs> um, but what I what I do want to say is that um, you know we started working together in a very like I'd say a relatively dark time for me because I was navigating the pandemic for myself. I had you know just mo- I had moved to L.A. Um, the goal was to like be closer to Jordan to do the show. It really, truly, it, this is like, you know, 2019. We still mm-hmm. had the podcast back then. We hadn't done it in a while because Jordan had moved to LA. I was still leaving Patreon. And then once I left Patreon, I had a really dark six months in San Francisco where I was like working for myself and it was very exciting, but I didn't really like have a, the structure like kind of wasn't there, you know, Anastasia and I were working together and Anastasia was in LA, but we weren't working together in like an official, official capacity yet. And, um, it was more like, Hey pal, can you review the script for me? Like that type of thing. Mm -hmm. And, um, I, you know, through one way or another moved, moved to LA, then the, you, you know, Jordan had to leave the country. Uh, the pandemic happened. It was just a series of unfortunate events where now we were remote. Those are not correlate. I was not involved in the pandemic. I just the had to leave the country. Still, there's different. a lot of theories mm-hmm. with experts that we just don't really know the answers and we can't take his word don't for it. Check. Um, but I, uh, you know, the opportunity came up for us to work together. And I think I was at a time where I was kind of open to switching things up, changing things up, seeing, you know, what you know, was going to help get me out of this funk. This is also the same line of thinking that led to me doing creator clash. We'll see how that turns out. Two weeks, April 15th. Um, the, <laughs> no, um, Jarvis Johnson, 1992. Yeah. <laughs> 2023. So, so one thing that I want to thank you for is that you've always extended yourself and been a very like solid resource and sort of, um, source of advice. Uh, you know, we've gotten coffee a few times. I've kind of let you know, like what's going on in my world. You've kind of given me your perspective on it. Uh, you know, you've heard the, the Jordan saga from the, you know, it's like, we're, we're trying to get this thing going. We're trying to get this podcast off the ground. We do not have Jordan back in the country yet, but like, you know, it's, it's going to happen, you know? And I, I just wanted to thank you for all of your support during that time. Um, cause I'm feeling really great these days about sort of this stuff that we're doing. Um, and it's going to feel even greater after Creator Clash because I'm going to have a lot of time back. But uh, yeah, I just wanted to sort of earnestly give you uh, that compliment and that thank you. Well, I appreciate that. Thanks, yeah. for, thanks for telling me. I really have enjoyed like the times that we've hung out. I mean, for me, you know, when we started working together, it was because we were fans of what you were doing and we just saw the potential of where where things were headed. And as we started talking, it was like, okay, this, this makes a lot of sense for us to be a resource yeah. for you. And I think, um, and for context for people who don't know mythical invested in, um, our company, our sad boys, like kind of company, sad boys LLC. Um, and so, which encompasses Jarvis Johnson, Jarvis Johnson gold, all of, sort of the whole content operation including sad boys and uh that was like the context under which we began working together yeah which Uh, and and a part of our program we're calling the mythical creator accelerator yeah and i was just really excited you know as making uh our team available and their their areas of expertise to you and to other up-and-coming creators or uh, you know you're not an up-and-coming creator Um, so I wouldn't put you in that category right now, but like, you know, just like you're, you're building, you're building something and you're, you're on this upward trajectory that like, um, I like to think that we still are, Red and I still are in, in, in many ways, but it's a challenge to do that. And at every turn, there's like all of these challenges to build your brand and protect yourself and, Express yourself, right? You know, so go no. after it, but in a way that's healthy for you. Definitely, you guys are a pretty rare example of having s- such a long tenure. Yeah, which I think is part not just that you've been on the platform a long time, but it's also been sustainable and you've adapted when you have to. It's kind of like definitely yeah, Bowie's phases kind of thing. Yeah, so we've been through a lot, and it was like, okay, how can we 
can we be of service to right. other creators that we want to have working relationships with us? So right. like that was that was where the start was for us. And Definitely. I was just I was excited to say, okay, my team can offer their areas of expertise, but for me, I I I'm interested in finding out what is unique to my experience that right. can be of help to you. Definitely. And to you and to you know, a handful of other creators, yeah. right? Yeah, so, I will piggyback on the compliment of, uh, you know, one of the things that I've always found helpful when I am in a low place is feeling witnessed so that even when you are... Witnessed? Yeah, witnessed okay. or, or, or um, even if See. you're not able to do much or have much agency in your life, at least you want, you're not being archived. It does feel like you still exist in the world. And you, when we... I mean, we met in person a handful of years ago for Patreon stuff. I still worked there. Right. First time we ever kind of socially met was the Streamies. No, the, was it the Streamies? That event. Yeah, one of the, the Streamies. Event. Yeah, the yeah, most yeah. recent one? Yeah, yeah, yeah whatever yeah. The, okay. the hell that was called. Um, and you, I had heard even prior, but there were just so aware of my immigration situation, yeah. which just made me feel witnessed. And, and like that was a a priority and an, an interest of people like plural and that just i don't know it felt like a full ish human yeah yeah because it's not a fun thing to go through it's no. just, that's a challenging yeah, thing out. yeah we ha we've we've had a few team members over the years who've been through versions yeah of you yeah. know the process that you yeah. went through so it was like yeah so we knew pretty up close and personal like it can just it can take the wind out of you yeah no just kidding. To, brian actually just wrote to a, see it to fruition brian uh brian flanagan of the, the mythical he was world. a literal witness wasn't yeah. he yeah he, he like he wrote me a recommendation letter yeah yeah sorts. yeah yeah and um i think the other thing is that jordan and i you know we quit our desk jobs essentially to do this and I think that part of the like challenge is building structure around the like rebuilding the structure that we had in that in that desk job for all of its faults. It did have sort of the one thing it's good at is make like getting workers in a position where they can do work. And I think that right. having a lack of um, structure where everything's free flowy that works for some people, but it really kind of especially with me and like my own mental health challenges uh, or situation, I, with my ADHD and stuff, I really do need the structure in order to be productive. So I think being able to, you know, get support on like building our team, understanding where there could be problems, trying things that don't work out. Um, and ultimately knowing that there is a North star of like, having a team that, you know, I think a lot of the conversations that we had about, you know, you guys just showing up to like do the thing, mm -hmm. uh, really influenced, you know, my hopes in finding someone like Jacob, who has been incredible, you know, shout out to producer Jacob in, uh, elevating our show and really like helping take the stress off and allowing us to not only do uh, the best version of our work, but to collaborate with with new people and, and really like contribute to their careers as well and, you know, create a cool thing together. You have a great team of people that are all the best people to do the, you know, it's a, I guess a silly reference, but build a ret stick, right? Yeah. That, right. Just, that would not have happened if you didn't have somebody. And that it's like that right. happens layer, layer by layer, years over yeah. years over years. And it, you know, being in the earlier stages of that, it's really helpful to have, you know, someone to like, who's been through it to like bounce, bounce off of. Is, I'm here for you, man. <laughs> you can text me more. How long were you guys rolling just the two of you before you actually started hiring people? We would have like a part-time editor back in North Carolina. And then we moved out here uh, 12 years ago is when we started hiring up. So like Stevie was our first hire and then, Stevie hired Ben, our like DP, director, editor, who, and, and both of them still work for us. Stevie's like, such a, I, I, so many people I know have no Stevie. 
It's the strangest. <laughs> no. If I reference mythical, I'd be like, oh, I was just talking to Stevie about something. Like, how? <laughs> why do they have the time to have so many friends? I don't understand. I don't know. I don't know how she has the time, but she does. Stevie's great. Um, so I wanted to show you some wild shit that we found on the internet. <laughs> this is a completely, we've kind of done the show upside down. This is like the upside down cake okay. of, of Sad Boys. All right. What? This is the thing where I'm like, I don't even know if you're comfortable watching this, but. Um, oh, is this me? No. Okay. <laughs> but it's. Do you want, uh, I hope it? not. <laughs> I'm like, the only thing I'd be uncomfortable watching is probably something you dug up about me. No. So okay, this good. is just a wild uh, TikTok that's going viral. I don't knock women for feeling proud and for wanting to have, you know, that girl power and holding things over him. But no, you've got to give it up, please. I please my man in every way. All the ways. Wake him up. He gets to nuts. <laughs> Before he leaves out the door, he's leaving empty nuts <laughs> at work. I am calling him like, come outside, it's your lunch break. <laughs> it's time for you to get your nut off. When he gets home, he's getting fed. He is getting another <laughs> nut and one before bed or two. If he's <laughs> That's it. That's a secret. I make sure that my man nuts at least six or seven times a day. She makes sure that her man nuts at least six or seven times a day. A I'll day. point out five of those are after empty. <laughs> <laughs> he leaves the house empty and there's right. five more. It feels like she's training him for something. <laughs> like she's putting him through a gauntlet. So uh, what's your question for me? <laughs> Uh, I don't want to presume. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I, but, I'm not just going to start talking extemporaneously. No, no, no. This is more like when you see something like this, what goes through your mind? Um, That's a lot, right? That is a lot. That's a lot of, that's a lot of nuts. I mean, there's been times <laughs> where I've said, you know, how many, how many in a day? How many in a day? Who are you I saying gotta this think, <laughs> I'll, I'll just say, just to speak candidly, um, not that many for me. Dead, <laughs> just dead I'm a ghost, I'm a husk. Yeah, I would be ash. I might, I might have had, I would love to think that at some point in my life, mm -hmm. once, right. there was a day uh -huh. where there were four. It was a big day. Yeah, but that maybe. doesn't even seem... I just, I want to be so real with you guys yes. that I'm going to say, I just can't, it, it probably can't be more than three. Look, I think and that's normal. That's like, <laughs> I think that's. Well, bear in mind, this is also seven days a week, 365 <laughs> yeah, days a year. Is, what Unless is he gets her, a day off for his birthday. What is her story? Well, that's a great question that you asked because the lore surrounding this, I think is more interesting than the TikTok itself. This is an OnlyFans model who's faking a podcast to advertise her OnlyFans, which I think is genius. So she's not talking to anyone? There's no, no one? No, she's, she's not, not looking even using at the mic correctly. This is not how you use... Oh, that's genius. Yeah. So so she's just using like the visual conventions right. of being on and a she's podcast? She's kind of holding it like this. Yeah, the pickup pattern for this mic up. is not, yeah, is not <laughs> what she's doing. <laughs> That's the best way to generate. <laughs> it adds up, yeah. A fake podcast to promote her OnlyFans, and you're falling for it right now. Well, so even if you're not, you are. Well, we want. Even if I, we're not, I, we I are. do. Like, I don't. <laughs> I think she's done some stuff that's maybe like unscrupulous or whatever. Like, uh, I heard that she like exposed herself in front of train tracks or something to advertise her, her OnlyFans, and then the train people were like, "Hey, this is." really dangerous and there could be kids on the train and this, stuff. This is for trains. <laughs> You're not supposed to be. So I, I don't really what? know. Like I can't fully co-sign this, but this is emblematic of a grander trend that's happening where people are pretending to have podcasts ah. that do not really exist mm -hmm. yeah. because every day there is a new viral, weird podcast on mm -hmm. the internet of somebody saying something insane. <laughs> and and as easy as it is to start a podcast, it's a lot easier to just fake the podcast for right. the clips. I'm like, do we just need to sit down and like, feels like make a, waste a bunch of time of, come to think of it. Yeah, maybe we, we could do that right now. What's something weird we could have an opinion on? Oh yeah, okay. So portrait frame of just of just link. If this is a fake podcast, I'm gonna look this way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm gonna talk to no one. Oh yeah, because sure that's that what she's doing. You gotta be like, 
I make sure my girl eats nine lasagnas a day. <laughs> I wake up. I'm feeding my girl lasagna. Um, she wakes up. <laughs> <laughs> she covered in lasagna. <laughs> covered in lasagna. <laughs> and then she she gets up. She does her makeup. She oh my god, she's so beautiful. I love her so much, and I love stuffing some lasagna in her face as she leaves the door. I make her a little lunchbox of lasagna. She's an orange tabby cat and she hates Mondays. <laughs> right. Sure, her name is Garfield and that is my <laughs> wife. Yeah. My hand is caught in a minivan door right now. <laughs> That's I'm so glad to be on your podcast. Like, yeah. Where you put the guest hands in a minivan door <laughs> And you shut it. It's our idea of like it hot hurts. ones. It's like we're it's like hot ones where you know instead of asking hot questions and even hotter wings, right. we subject slam our, your hands in various a, doors, a minivan yeah. door, increasingly large machinery, and right? A thresher at the end. How's your relationship with your father? As long, <laughs> as, long as they bring the doors to me, I'd probably be up <laughs> right, for it. Right. That's true. Oh, like and it starts the same way where they're like, "That's not too bad." Hey, it's like uh, two pieces of paper. Yes. Like, is, it supposed to, is it supposed to be easy early on? Oh, that one's slow. That one hits you a little bit down the way. Oh, oh. Wow. it tingles. I'm kind of still thinking about what is this guy? <laughs> I mean, he really doesn't. I mean, he doesn't have that many nuts. He does. I just have to keep going back to it. The memes, it, it, the, it's just like responses are very funny. Wait. Um, <laughs> okay. Yeah, it's like a desiccated. Nut, yeah. It's like unwrapping a mummy is what that guy this is <laughs> looks like on the inside. Me after my third nut and I haven't had lunch yet. <laughs> I it is sorry. The the lunchtime one is very funny to me. But I like the idea of like yeah. your your partner is like on a Zoom meeting, like at work, and then she's like, okay, honey. She like shows up at the glass door and you're like uh, oh, Jesus. Could we? It's like a, you're in a one-on-one -on -one with your manager, and it's like <laughs> I have to go. And um, yeah. a per something personal came up. I understand? Don't check Twitter. That's he <laughs> comes back and he looks like he's like just a shell of a man. Yeah, it looks like a carapace. <laughs> yeah, I'm not. I'm just not a fan of the fact that this is entirely fake, and it, I don't think it's good. I don't think it's good for relationships. Yeah, I think you need to express your needs, and yes. you need to. You need to. You need to be clear, and but you need to collaborate on that. Collaborating is important because it does seem like that the man who is nutting is more like a cow <laughs> in like yeah, a yeah, stable yeah. where he's being asked kind of to a flavor flav slave to the dynamic. Goods. Goods. Yeah, there is no man. There's no man. <laughs> there's no all. man. There's no man. But if there was a man, he doesn't really have a say in any of this. She's doesn't like, sound I've, like it. I've doesn't even host the, the podcast. Yeah, she get some revenue. I don't know. Yeah. Um, what is the man? I did not know that it was a fake podcast, and it's so interesting that at no point in that clip did they say it was a podcast. We've just become so acclimatized to the yeah. text and presentation of a podcast. You got the mic, you're talking, you're looking off camera. Yeah. yeah, it's like, um, I mean, oh, hello, it's me again. I'm Jarvis from the sh podcast that you're watching right now, except for I'm in the future. And you can watch what I'm doing right now. Me and Jordan are here. And we're doing another episode of the podcast exclusive to Patreon. Patreon.com slash Pod. For as low as $5, you get access to a all of our exclusive bonus episodes. You And you'll get access to other fun stuff as well. Does Trump go to jail? You'll have to find out. <laughs> so these guys, I don't know if their podcast is real. Well, yeah, now what do we trust? Guys don't like hanging out with girls. We don't like to have fun and hang out with girls. We like to sleep with girls. We like to attract girls. But if we want to just have fun and we don't want to like have that like tension, that flirtatious tension or end up sleeping with a girl, we would prefer to hang out with guys. That's just the truth. I just think this is, this is just dumb shit. You know, it's like, <laughs> I just have, you know, it's like, I've, you know, I got a son who's 17. I got a son who's 13. And it's like, you just, if you just, I would just hope that, like, you're watching this and you're laughing at it. There's people right. who watch this stuff and then they're like, oh, I, yes, I'm oh, learning well, from the ones. I'm, I'm, I, this is aspirational. They get indoctrinated into using terms like beta unironically. Well, that's that the yes. Because the target audience for this is like a 17-year-old boy mm -hmm. who is like, uh, like, 
coming into their own in adulthood and which learn. I would say is I would say it's probably 14 year old boy but mm -hmm. yeah yeah but that's the thing is like there is a whole kind of pipeline having an alternative where it's like oh actually this isn't the path to exactly. enlightenment <laughs> that's what, what I mean? that's what I believe in about what you guys are doing one yeah. of, I mean one of the things I believe in so much oh, about what oh, you're doing this like no six. but yeah it's you 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 you're you're applying some sense right and sensibility <laughs> to or Jane Austen essentially yeah <laughs> sense and sensibility written by you're Jordan the Jane Jane Austen. Johnson yeah to to all the dumb shit out there yeah and then it's like you know I'm just sorry that you have to you have to endure this stuff in order to then like you're a student of it like, right oh you I, have to. I avoid this stuff. Like the plague, like yeah. yeah, it is nowhere. None of this stuff is anywhere in my world. That's by it, design. I think it feels almost. It's a, it's kind of. Um, re, we are literally reacting in that I think we were just on the age cusp of them trying to get us. Right. Of just uh -huh. just on the corner of okay. Well, no, I've had like 17, 18 years of life experience, yeah. and I've hung out with women for fun. So yeah. you now saying this, the most bizarre thing about that kind of statement is what's this in service of? So now you don't get to, now you have to pretend you don't like hanging out with women right. for fun. Which is, yeah, which is Who bad. benefits? I played Magic the Gathering with a woman last night. <laughs> okay? okay. All, all the allegations are true. I hang out with women. Wait, what about the flirtatious tension? It was a black white deck. Sorry, it was a black blue deck versus a red white deck. Okay? That is flirtatious. There were goblins. <laughs> there were flying paladins with vigilance. Okay. I like this guy. Okay. <laughs> I like this new joke. All right. It was commander. We were playing commander. 100 card decks. You need a commander. All right. He's, your nose is bleeding. <laughs> <laughs> it was a good old time. We went to the card shop and we bought some cards. Let go of me, man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And I just want to normalize that. <laughs> That's yeah. what I'm saying. But it's, but it's only depriving people. I don't. There's n there's no reward for thinking it's, that. Yeah, way. the this is saying to close your world off. <laughs> Do not open yourself to platonic friendships with women. In fact, I am now limiting what your relationships with with women can be. It's, and this guy is speaking. He's saying we, and and then he's like, oh, and I'm sorry. You just have to see this. Oops. The nut woman? I've already seen that. You gotta see this. <laughs> Let's bring Seven her back. times. Oh, there's a there's a sequel where she's like I need to see her after lunch. She's like, he's, he's dead. <laughs> <laughs> My husband's in his grave. I dig him up. I exhume the body. He's oh. getting another nut. <laughs> <laughs> Seven days a week I do that. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay. Um, if you're a guy in your 20s and you don't have a Lamborghini, you should actually sit down and have like a serious discussion with yourself as to why you don't have a Lambo. Yep. Because it's, I realize now that it's so incredibly easy and there's so much money out there and 200 grand relative to what is out there in circulation and what you can grab, especially now with AI tools that you can leverage <laughs> like never before, 200 grand is Trump change. And yep. people will say I'm out of touch with reality and they, and they would be right. suck yeah. it. People can say that I don't have much perspective on life and that I am actually only performing as a rich person and I'm going to say vague things about AI technology to do something. I don't know, make money. <laughs> well, I mean, you have sons. So your perspective is this must be about to be in their 20s. So I just don't. where's their Lambo at? <laughs> Are you disappointed in them? So does he have a Lambo? Yeah. Of course not, of course. actually. No, he does. He probably does. But his his money comes from crypto and it comes from drop yeah. shipping. AI technology. So that's the thing. It's like it, I don't I don't watch people that I don't think I could be friends with. Like, yeah. That's my criteria. Like this guy, yeah, the I mean, three words out of his mouth. I'm like, I don't want to know this person. Like, <laughs> I, don't, I don't want I don't want to. You know, so I don't think I'm going to learn anything from, I don't, I'm going to choose not to learn anything from this person. Right. Well, I think being. Maybe that's closed minded. No, I don't, I don't think know. It's being connected and relatable is kind of the foundation of what you've done for a you, long time. You're getting what the kids call the ick. Yeah. <laughs> from, getting from the, the ick, yeah. From this guy. He's, cause I mean, he's saying something very incendiary and outlandish on purpose, but. His whole content is built around it. Still don't know if this podcast is real. I was going to ask. He's have two different podcasts, and the other person's never in the shot. And what? But the other shot is just 
Oh well, yeah, that's this, a Porsche. We're introducing you. <laughs> <laughs> Why is that a Porsche? <laughs> All right, bro. Say, we, this is we've taught Link to do commentary if, videos. If there's, <laughs> if there's a guy in not, his twenties with a Porsche, you should be ashamed. <laughs> You're supposed to have right. A why? Why? Did he put the Porsche down there? Yeah, so his editor his did. <laughs> it's a tiny little Porsche. <laughs> so this is a this is a a tactic on TikTok. A TikTok tactic. A TikTok. A Tic Tac. Okay. Uh, where to boost engagement, people will put something additional content, be it oddly satisfying, working with slime, and, uh, and a family guy clip. It's yeah. called sludge content, is like okay. the sort of sludge. So it's it does it's not supposed to be the car he's talking about. It's not. It's he not. wouldn't have been better yeah. off not putting a car. Yeah, it's like it was <laughs> just so it was just uncannily close. Yeah, so that he is, just looks even more like an idiot. Yeah, so this is like you're playing South Park while mm-hmm. you're watching some like oddly satisfying content. It's okay. like if you cuz if you're 15 and you have to watch someone yeah. speak, oh, that's God. boring. Oh no. Yeah. So now you've got to you got to uh, sweeten the deal yeah. with a Porsche. You need two different things you kind of like to yeah. be playing all wow. the time. S- sludge? Yeah, that's like the term that oh. journalists, I think, are giving it. Okay. Um, it's got a lot of different names, but... Do you have, uh, as somebody that's been on the internet for so long, did you have any desire to kind of curate your kid's experience of the internet? <sighs> kind of maybe dampen some of the the more toxic experiences people can have. I I think I had that desire, but boy, that's a hard thing to figure out how to do. Yeah. By the time you start to figure it out, they're t- they're too old. <laughs> you know, it's like I I think as a parent you're you, you know, it's a lot of times you feel a little bit behind. Did either of them ever watch your content? Do Oh, do they? Yeah. Um yeah, over like Lando, he just turned 13. He'll still go through sp- Stints where he'll watch the show. Right. Cool. He'll watch the show. He likes rap. And he's not. You know, he, he likes rap. <laughs> he just hangs out with the red stick. Um, <laughs> it's like a babysitter. You know, he says, he, he gives me good positive feedback. Um, like, like this should have a Lambo in it somewhere. Like we were talking about Lando's big into Studio Ghibli movies. Cool. Which Great I know. He, he's introducing me to oh, all of awesome. those movies. Oh, like fine. we saw um, uh, My Neighbor Totoro in the oh. movie theater. Last oh, week, hell awesome. yeah! So like, I'm getting introduced to this world because I missed all of that, right? And I was like, it's interesting. How, it's like, it's hard for me to to stay awake during these movies That's because funny. they're great, but they're so relaxing. And then Chrissy's like, yeah, it's 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 like there's a lot of fun and emotion, but there's not. It's not as big on plot. Mm. And then Lando's like, yeah, Dad, that's like you. You <laughs> fun and emotional. No plot. Damn. So he... You were looking at yourself reflected in Hayao Miyazaki's classic, My Neighbor Totoro. So he appreciates... He watches the show. Lando appreciates who I am and what I put out into the world. Lando sounds awesome and has great taste, and I think you might have lucked out. Because if your kid is showing you Miyazaki movies, we have a favorite your son. Once again, add that to the list. I don't even want to know about the other son. He's my favorite. Yeah. Okay. We found one. But he... So he's not on... Lando's not on TikTok yet. He's not on, he doesn't, he texts his friends, but he's not on social media. So like. The, the younger son? Yeah. Okay, right. Yeah, yeah. Lando yeah. and then older. I mean, I don't want, if you have Lincoln, spoken about Lincoln's, their, okay. Lincoln's um, 18 and then Lily's 20. Oh. Oh yeah, because yeah. Lily's in college now. Mm-hmm. That is so surreal. Yep. Does that feel very weird to you? It was like, whenever we were sending off to college, like I devoted an entire podcast to talking about it because right. I'm like, I want to squeeze every every moment out of this like iconic experience. Yeah. For for me. Yeah. As well as for her. Like I just want to remember this and like um, it's archived. There's an actual history. I, there, it, yeah, yeah. So I like, and in other words, like I would cry a whole lot. Like when we dropped her off and like right. taking pictures of that iconic moment of her like walking away and then. You know, a couple months later, she's she's back at home. She's like, "Oh, I got a, a few extra days." I'm, you know, it's a, it didn't turn out to be nearly as dramatic, right, right, as I made it out to be. That's never in the coming of age story. No, is the like two months yeah. later coming yeah. back? Come back. I mean, she'll she'll like come home and visit, or like, oh, I'm taking this quarter off, or I'm this, or I'm that, right. and I'm around, and 
It's yeah. like, well, when are you, okay, when are you going back again? <laughs> yeah, this wasn't the final as it felt like in the moment. I've got it to was, record some shows where I cry. Can you leave again in a right. dramatic way? <laughs> it's oh, winter break is over and she's gone again. A TikTok of her walking away with like uh, footage of Rick and Morty at the bottom <laughs> half of the screen. <laughs> Sludge it up. We, this podcast has a very interesting audience. We have a lot of teens. We have a lot of like early 20 somethings. And then we have, you know, uh, people who are parents as well. And I think it would be cool to get your perspective on, you know, advice for someone who's in that late teen, early 20s world. You know, you've seen your own kids kind of enter that and go through it. You have a little bit of a sense of the problems that they're dealing with. So maybe you could do a little third, like secondhand parenting to the uh, emotional perverts that are listening to the Sad Boys podcast. Whatever pressure that you're feeling and that may be coming from inside of yourself, that may be coming from somebody else, may be coming from an idea that's floating out there. Let's notch that down a little bit. We're all just trying to figure this out. I think the more that you can understand who you are and find some things about yourself that you want to celebrate, Maybe that's just privately. It's not like you got to shout it from the rooftops. You can build on that. Build on what makes you you, what gives you joy, what makes you happy. And then find somebody who loves you for who you are that you can, you can trust when things go sideways and you need, you, need, you need a little help. I think that nobody's got it figured out. Like, don't put so much pressure on yourself. Just, Just... You're doing good. You're doing, you do, you're doing just as good as anybody else. Thanks. You know? That was actually advice for both of us. We, we tricked you. Thank you for giving us advice. Well, I should have looked at you. I was looking down the... <laughs> um, no, you guys, no, are, no, you guys that, are doing all right. Just, that was advice for everyone. Um, thank you, L Count Cuddle Baby. Um, Snuggle Baby. Fuck! You stupid idiot. It's in, it's, in, it's in parentheses. Do you want to... We can dub it. Do you want to just give, it, give us that clean? Yeah. Snuggle Cut. baby. Fuck. Well, oh, again. Jarvis. Thanks again to I'm so excited Snuggle for you guys. Baby. I'm so glad you guys are in the same space. Yeah. You got your shit figured out. At least the, some of it that yeah. gets you here. Yeah. Enough to have it off my mind and, and be, figure the rest of it like, out within this podcast. Yeah. We'll That'd do that. Fun. That'll be on the Patreon. Saddle it up. When, um, if you look closely, my eyes are kind of always <laughs> thinking about it. <laughs> it's always there. Um, Check out, uh, we're going to have a bonus episode uh, with just the boys because uh, we. I have to go after this so we can't record immediately after. But we're going to have a bonus episode, patreon.com slash sadboys. But we end every episode of Sad Boys with a particular phrase. We, we love, love you. you. And we're sorry. Boom. Boom. The shirt says the Matrix was released March 31st, 1999. Andrew Tate was released March 31st, 2023. Do you understand now? Do you understand? <laughs> if you wash that on warm or above, it just becomes a black t-shirt. Yeah. Take the red pill and give me my coffee. Gucci girl, Gucci girl, how you doing? How you moving girl? Moving girl, how's your day looking? That future girl, future girl, yeah, we on now. Take my money, go away, how you want it? Gucci rich for me.